Hello, everyone, and welcome to Algorithms and AI, Artificial Intelligence, the Future of Communication. I'm Dr. Jessica Eyes, and this lecture is a part of a short co course. And my goals are to um, help you develop the agility to work intelligently in digital environments and to stay on the vanguard of communication innovation. So in our first three lectures, we reviewed the foundations of algorithms and artificial intelligence and took a broad look at AI's influence on communication. In our last lecture, we looked at AI's influence on the media, particularly social media news feeds. And in today's lecture, we are going to look at AI's influence on another area of communication, which is organizational communication. Um, so as I mentioned in our last lecture, we discussed AI and communication media. Communication media referring to mass platforms of distribution of information to different segments of society, such as Facebook, Twitter, and other social media platforms, as well as newspapers, radio, television, cinema, and other outlets. Uh, today we're talking about organizational communication and the impact of artificial intelligence. Organizations are all around us in society. They are the blocks that make up the parts of our functioning um, environment, our society. Organizations refer to groups such as companies, governments, uh, sports teams, other organized bodies of individuals that work uh, together towards some common goal or gather for some common purpose. Uh, organizational communication occurs within an organization and its own members. It can occur um, between an organization and external stakeholders. Uh, for those of my uh, students who have English as a second language, you'll hear me use the word stakeholder very often when we discuss organizational communication. And a stakeholder is defined simply as a person with an interest or concern in something in an organization. So it's a, it's a very broad term. Uh, let's look at a few examples of what organizational communication is. So a government such as the United States government or the Colombian government are vast organizations. They have messages that they desire to communicate within their own governments in order to work effectively. And they desire to communicate to external stakeholders, such as other governments, their own citizens, et cetera, in order to achieve goals. So they have services they need to provide that require communication, such as managing elections, immigration, new laws, um, and other organizations such as companies, uh, Amazon, Google, Almacenes, other organizations, they communicate internally to their own employees in order to produce, and they communicate externally to stakeholders such as company, uh, customers in order to garner sales and retain business. Um, they require communication to conduct their business, right? Even small organizations, uh, such as your local sports team or a club that you might belong to, these are organizations. And even in these small groups, there is internal and external communication as well. Um, this type of communication is fundamental for groups of people with defined missions, whether that be pleasure, business, or governance to obtain their objectives. Right, so organizational communication has been going on since the dawn of human society as we know it. There was organizational communication far before our digital revolution. An example might be a town crier. So this was an officer of a royal court or a public authority whose job was to make public announcements as required. So they literally stood in a town square and just bellowed announcements at the top of their lungs and people stood around and listened, all right? 
probably whispering to each other like, hey, what, do you, what did he say, right? So uh, smoke signals were legitimate forms of communication between groups of people at one time. So were pigeons, right? Governments and groups of people needed to communicate with each other. And so they found ways to do so, right? With town criers, with smoke signals, with messenger pigeons. Um, we have advanced quite a way from the days of organizations using town criers and pigeons and smoke signals. Uh, digital technologies over the past century have revolutionized the ways in which organizations communicate. Just think of uh, what the telephone has done for the way organizations operate or television or the radio. But today, uh, organizations are adopting a new technology for communication efforts. Um, and these are what we call artificial intelligence technologies. So let's look at several ways we see artificial intelligence impacting organizational communication. First, let's look at what I call service communication or business to client or government to citizen, right? Organization to member, basically, communication flows. These are between the organization and individual stakeholders in order to provide a service or a product, conduct internal organizational operations that are necessary to maintain their external members. Um, and here we see a very large impact of artificial intelligence on organizational communication. So I've separated today's lecture into three parts. So first we're going to talk about uh, service communication and artificial intelligence. Then we'll look at strategic communication and artificial intelligence. And then we'll actually look at AI, artificial intelligence communication products. So we'll start with service communication. Um, before uh, digital technologies and artificial intelligence, much of the service-oriented communication between an organization and its stakeholders had to take place in person. If you needed to do banking, you had to go to the bank. If you wanted to trade stocks, you had to call your broker. Uh, basic procedures required you to interact directly with a human being who belonged to the organization, to talk to them, to work with them, to see them. Today, so much of these communication processes have been automated due to artificial intelligence. So much of the mundane communication processes that required people to, that required people, like actual people to perform, such as updating records, updating addresses, making appointments, transferring data, um, processes that used to require in-person conversations or in-person visits or phone conversations or written letters sent through the mail. So many of these are gone now. Uh, for instance, AI technologies allow for data transferal from emails and call center system records. Um, they can update customer files with address changes or service additions. Um, AI technologies can even replace lost credit cards or ATM cards. Um, a lot of this data management and like service communication functions um, are handled by AI technologies. Uh, let's turn to look at customer service. Um, customer service is a huge and incredibly important form of communication between a business and its clients or an organization and its members. One huge way that artificial intelligence has changed customer service operations in organizational communication is through chatbots. AI chatbots are algorithms that are programmed by programmers to respond to customer or member inquiries and conduct relatively co uh, complex actions. Right? So basically, uh, a chat box is a script um, that is an automated response written by a person that is prompted to appear or play 
by a particular customer or member in query. Right, so chatbots are seen as having a lot of potential within organizations with service operations uh, for several reasons. Um, some are pretty obvious. So being machines, uh, they don't need to sleep. They can work any time of day. They can handle a very high volume of requests. They don't have to take time to search for answers because they've already been programmed into its algorithm. Uh, in terms of simple requests and processes, they can make fewer errors. And they can also perform uh, simple functions such as transferring money or booking hotel rooms, or like we mentioned earlier, replacing an ATM card. Um, you may not even know if you've been chatting with an AI chat box, right? So the next time you're online and you're chatting with customer service, you might want to ask yourself or them, if they're even a real person. There are already chat box technologies that exist that companies can buy or organizations can buy and simply program for their organizational needs with a user-friendly interface template. They can drag and drop responses and actions that they want their chat box to use in response to queries. These are on the market right now I mean, ostensibly, you could go online and buy one and set it up to answer your unwanted text messages and emails. Um, it isn't only for customer service and basic daily functions that AI communication technologies have changed the way businesses and organizations communicate. So organizations can access a lot of data on their audiences or stakeholders, such as age, gender, geography, education, employment, even interests, um, and store and process all of that vast amount of data. And using that data, try and send messages that are designed specifically for those groups of people based on their character traits. And this is what we would consider to be strategic communication, which is the second area we're going to talk about. Um, so targeted strategic communication in organizations is when an organization attempts to communicate to particular groups to achieve a particular aim or goal. This has a different flavor from service communication, which is intended to satisfy clients or members that are already participating in your organization. Strategic communication can take a variety of forms depending on the nature of the organization. A few examples are marketing, like selling or promoting a product or service, brand development, so just general brand development to raise the status or reputation of a particular organization, uh, public service announcements, so trying to get groups of people to change their behaviors for the well-being of themselves and others. So how does AI primarily influence targeted strategic communication? Um, as mentioned, this is where we find a strong presence of artificial intelligence as well in organizational communication um, by using our data, vast, vast amounts of data. Um, organizations have the unprecedented power of holding and analyzing our data to manipulate or target their communication to us. So uh, I think one good way to sort of make sense of this is to juxtapose it against the past to get an idea of what this really means. At one point in time, all records held on people were paper records. Um, for instance, if a company had a client, they would need to fill out a form and update that form every time the client came in. If they needed to refer to the data on that client, they would have to walk to the appropriate filing cabinet, pull out the filing cabinet, and read the physical piece of paper. If they wanted to know what percentage of their client base was between the ages of 18 and 24, for instance, it would take a vast amount of human labor to pull out all the files and tally them, right? 
If someone's data was out of date, updating their file would require trying to track them down because the person couldn't just go online and update their profile after being prompted to do so via email. It wasn't possible. Um, if a company's building burnt down, all the files were lost. That data was gone. There was no backup in the cloud. Um, if they wanted to sell their client data to someone else, um, which didn't happen very often, it would require an immensely tedious and clunky process of transporting large number of boxes. Um, and then the team on the other side would have to take ages to sort through all that data and make sense of it one by one. The sheer logistics and tedium involved. Um, it was very difficult to maintain large amounts of data on people and analyze them quickly and effectively. Um, it was done, but not in the way it's done today. And a lot of data just simply could not be accessed. Um, compared to from then to now, um, we've seen just an unbelievable change in how our data is collected and stored virtually. As we have learned in past lectures, artificial intelligence technologies have the ability to scrape data, organize it, and store it. And this has the, given the ability to analyze this data rapidly from various input sources and produce helpful output results to guide decision making. It takes the stroke of a key to discover how many 18 to 24 year olds comprise a client base and artificial intelligence technologies can go so much further than just basic demographic identifiers. For instance, artificial intelligence can allow for rapid network analysis to reveal the web of relationships between people and organizations. So what people talk to other people, how often do they talk, who's an influencer, um, who, who would be important to target to share knowledge. Um, another technique uh, is natural language processing. Natural language processing is the use of algorithms um, to perform text searching and mining to identify important patterns within large bodies of text. Um, there are techniques such as sentiment analysis whereby organizations can even measure the emotional valence or tone behind words. So by acting on this information, this data, organizations can target their messages to you. They can target their communications to you. Um, just think, for instance, about all the tailored ads you see online. This is a form of communication. Um, you can send an email about buying a new backpack to a friend. You can do a Google search on basketball. You can click like on one photo of a tomato plant. And suddenly you might start seeing ads for backpacks, basketballs, and tomato seeds. Strategic communication can be conducted by organizations in ways that have never been done before by tailoring and drawing on extensive bodies of data very rapidly. So let's move now to the third, which is artificial intelligence communication products. Uh, many of us use artificial intelligence communication products nearly every day. Uh, these uh, were built by organizations and are sold and marketed to us. Uh, two of the most popular examples would be Siri and Alexa for instance. Um, these are artificial intelligence communication products that we use that are provided to us by an organization. So Siri, for instance, um, Siri uses speech recognition and natural language processing. So how does speech recognition works? work? So speech recognition is the task of converting human speech so me talking right now, into its corresponding textual form. So my words put into text. Uh, for instance, when you trigger Siri 
let's see if it will do this with my phone. Hey Siri, um, in the back end, a powerful speech recognition system by Apple kicks off. I'm distracted by Siri being activated on my phone. Uh, so a very powerful speech recognition system by Apple kicks off and converts your audio into its corresponding textual form. Hey Siri. Um, this is an extremely challenging task simply because we humans have a highly diverse set of tones as well as accents. So not everybody's voice sounds like mine, right? And not everybody's voice sounds like the engineer who's designing it. Um, many people have different accents. So many of my students are from different countries. You have different accents. Um, and the accents vary not even just across countries, but also states and cities. Uh, some people speak fast and some people pe speak slowly. Uh, characteristics of male and female voices are also very different. Um, so the engineers at Apple train machine learning models on large transcribed data sets in order to create efficient speech recognition models for Siri. These models are trained with highly diverse data sets that comprise voice samples of a large group of people. This way, Siri is able to cater to various accents. So to wrap up, we have seen that in organizations, artificial intelligence influences communication services, strategic communication, and communication products. It has grown into many spaces within organizations and organizational communication. So, as I always like to end, to talk about some considerations, um, as with all artificial technologies and communication, there are a lot of questions to ask and a lot of potential to explore. Um, with organizational communication and AI, there are a few primary points that I like to talk about. Okay, one, should there be boundaries around the amount of data organizations can collect on us? Does there need to be a much clearer disclosure and consent process? Does it need to be more regulated? Do we care or do we not care? Um, two, can we use artificial um, intelligence technologies to help us improve communication for the well being of society? How can we innovate on them? How can we expand them into new areas? How can we use them wisely in our companies and organizations? And three, do people, does our society need to have a basic digital literacy on what these technologies are? and how they influence communication. Is that a right that we should have as a society so we can understand what is happening with our data and how we are being communicated to and with? And if so, if people do have a right to basic digital, li digital literacy, how do we go about doing that? So many questions, many things to discuss, um, and as we have seen, companies are already, and organizations are already using artificial intelligence to communicate with us regularly. Um, so thank you to everyone. Next time, we will talk about artificial intelligence and its impact on interpersonal communication.